So you want to start a business. You don't know where to start. You don't even know who to trust. Some of you don't even know what you want to do. The big question is, how do you start a business that is not only fun, but profitable? Hold on for a second, and I'm going to tell you that and more. There's a lot of people that will tell you starting a business is easy. If you have experience, if you're connected, if you have a shitload of money, it could be easy. Even if you have all those things, there's a few things that are missing. And that's one of the problems. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, host of the Hustlers Kung Fu Show. If you don't know what kind of business that you want to start, I have a recommendation for you. Get this book. It's called The $100 Startup. You can get it on Amazon as a physical copy, or you can get it from Audible. If you've never had an Audible subscription, go below the video, take advantage of the free trial, and you can get that book today for free. Now, how cool is that? I have some other special things for you below the video, but we'll get into that later. Now, let's get into the show. The truth of the matter is that many of you only want to make a lot of money. Ah, 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 ah. Hey, hey, hey. Don't slay the messenger. I'm just giving you the truth. Look, Alex, I want you to be successful. I want you to be happy, to make a lot of money, to enjoy each and every day, to have unprecedented freedom. These are some of the things that creating a business that serves people, these are byproducts. These are things that could happen. But Alex, I got to tell you a few things that you don't want to hear. Number one, it's not going to be easy. Number two, more than likely, it's not going to be quick. Number three, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. I know, I know, it's not what you heard on the interwebs. That's not what you heard for the free 99. Or that guy who was saying, I'm giving you 90% of my information for free. So the 10% that I charge for should be outstanding. It's none of that. I'm not telling you that. What I'm going to do is give you my story, Alex. I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've started 10 businesses in my life. Well, maybe 12. Let's just call two hustles. Let's just call two hustles. 10 businesses. First five sucked ass. Let me tell you what I did with the first business. I was going to start a photo service. Pictures with your pooch. That was the name of the business. I know, I know, I know. It's a little crazy. Well, I did it. I bought this camera from Wolf Camera way back in the day. Bought it on credit since you know I was in the military and they had this special for the armed forces members. I got my camera right. I put an ad in the Atlanta Journal Constitution. It was expensive. And I was at Fort McPherson that place that Tyler Perry's getting ready to buy or bought, something like that. I was, st I was stationed there, so we had the privilege to put phones in our room. So I ordered a phone service. So I had my own phone in the room, I had my camera, and I had my ad in the newspaper. I was ready to make some money. So I waited by that phone and waited and waited and waited. And when I would get off work every day, I would come in, I'd check the answering machine. No messages. Nobody. Now, I'll tell you about another business. It was a storage auction business. If you want to investigate my background, please do. Go to Amazon.com. Put in Glendon Cameron, and all my books will pop up. First book was about storage auctions. I was in that business for 10 years. I worked 70, 100-hour weeks routinely. Often worked seven days a week. Business was phenomenally successful. I was on the showroom floor. I would talk to customers. I knew what people wanted to buy. I knew what they didn't want to buy. I knew how to move product. We even had a problem in that business where we're getting too much inventory so quickly that we were placing items in 4,000 square feet of warehouse space for a dollar. Microwaves, Christmas ornaments, 
TVs, because we were getting this stuff, because I, I, I did this inventory of things that we routinely got, and we just had to clear it out because it cost us money to throw it away because it was so much that we would fill up our dumpster literally after two loads. Well, that business was very successful. Now, in those stories, I just told you the tale of you, Alex, because many of you, Alex, like I was a long time ago when I started Pictures With Your Pooch, I wanted to make some money. I didn't really give a damn about the marketplace, didn't give a damn about people, didn't care. It was all about me, Alex, and that's your problem. It's all about you, Alex. You even have the audacity to be upset with me for wanting to charge for my services. How dare I? Because it's all about you. It's all about you, Alex. And that's the fucking problem. It's all about you. See, pictures with a pooch was I wanted to make some money. I was at Fort McPherson. I was a young soldier. I didn't know anything about business. I was still a young person. Didn't know a lot about life. And that's why that business failed. Because if I was to do that business today, I would have went to everyone that I knew that had a dog or a cat or a parakeet, whatever. And I would have said, hey, what kind of pictures of your beloved pet would you like to have, Alex? And I would query them and I would offer pictures for free. And once I started to get a format and a system, then I would have went to Wolf Camera and got the new camera. I already had a camera, but because I was all fancy, and Alex, it was all about me. It was all about me, so I had to get a new camera. I had to get the phone. I had to put that ad in the paper so I could be respectable. Right, Alex? And that's why I failed. See, that's, once again, it was all about me. Well, I would have made it all about them and their animals. And once I got that system together, I would have went and said, look, Look at these examples of wonderful pictures. Back then, you know, the internet wasn't really bumping the way that it is now. And I would say, look, I have a nice portfolio of happy pet owners. Matter of fact, you could talk to them. They love the pictures. That's how I would have made that business successful. It could have been successful because I would have had to make it all about the pets and all about the people, Alex. But see, like you, at that point in my life, it was all about me. Well, fast forward to the second business. I got into it after having another profitable business. I didn't like it because I was always in debt, Alex. Always in debt. I mean, if you've ever been in $30,000 of debt, $100,000 in debt, $250,000 in debt, it's kind of hard to sleep at night. These were receivables and accounts due. Some of these things were 30-day net, 60-day net, 90-day nets. If you don't know what that means, from the day that I picked up that product, I had 90 days to pay it off in full. And some of these distributors made me put down a 50% deposit because I was a brand new business. So I get this big check from this client, right, Alex? $150,000 with my company name on it. I'm like, I'm making money, right? Wrong. I got to give that 150 plus the 15 grand that was already in the account to my distributor to get more product. So it looked like I was making money, but Alex, I wasn't making any money. I was making other people money. Because see, it was still all about me. So I left that business, then I got into the storage auction business. I had to learn so much so quick. It was crazy. I had to learn about collectibles, antiques, guns, M16s, the laws on how to sell a class three fully automatic weapon. I had to learn how to the state laws about selling handguns. I had to learn about cars. I, I would buy units, Alex, that had cars in the units and the car had a lien on it. It's like, hey, how can I sell this? And the process was to send the lien holder a notice of rent because I was charging them a holding fee because I had their property. It was theirs because they hold the lien. But since I had it, it was costing me money. Due to this wonderful thing called the rule of law, I could charge them a rental fee and after a period of time, it was like, well, just keep the car. Here's the title because it's cheaper than paying you the rental fee. But that's another story. I was forced to learn so many things, so many ins and outs. Uh, when I would pay my landlord, Alex, it was made out to the trust to his kids. So I learned a whole new level of business. 
Because, see, it wasn't about me. It was about my partner. It was about my product. It was about the customers. I was last on the list. I learned the most. See, that's how you create a profitable business when it's not about you. And that's one of the things with this fancy G whiz internet life. It's all about what I want. I'm a member of some high level mastermind groups and I just hear terms like sucking the list dry, getting every penny out. That doesn't really float for me. I'm not judging. I'm not going to say any names. I'm just going to say, I don't think that's all about the customer. I don't think that's all about the marketplace. So Alex, if you want to create a profitable business, make it about the marketplace, make it about the customer. So the first thing that you have to do is forget that you even exist. You don't matter. Your customers don't care if you had a bad day. Marketplace doesn't care if your mother has cancer. Uh-uh. Doesn't care. And that's something you have to deal with. Yeah, it's fucked up. It truly is. And I will say if you have some really good customers because you made it all about them, that they will have empathy and a lot of them will really go to bat for you in certain situations like that. I still have people who ask me today about my partner. I met a guy recently. I was at Zaxby's on Buford Highway. And this guy, he kept looking at me and I had that deja vu look like I know that guy, but I couldn't place it because it's been like eight years. And he comes up and he's like, hey, because, you know, he was Hispanic. He had that thick accent. He's like, hey, you, you still got that warehouse? No, nah, man, we had to close it. Why? I love that place. Man, here's my number. You open again. Let me know. I'll come. I'll bring my friends and family like we used to. I love that place, man. Thanks. Eight years ago, and people still remember, because that business was all about them. I would get there early in the morning, pull out the signs to avoid, you know, to avoid the code enforcement people, right? Then I was sitting there and I was sitting at my desk because I had a position where I could watch everybody and see the whole warehouse. And I would watch what people would buy and I would watch where they would linger and I would watch where they would pause and I'd write it down. Or sometimes I would just remember it. And the more of that stuff that I did, the more profitable the business became to the point where money was just flowing out my ass. It's kind of funny how that worked, Alex. So if you want to build a profitable business, you're going to have to forget about you. You're going to have to forget about your mortgage. You're going to have to forget about your kid's private school, the ex-wife, child support. All that's got to go out the window. You have to 100% align yourself with what the marketplace wants and when you get to a supreme level of hustling entrepreneurship, you can actually dictate what the market needs because you're coming from a position of, I want you to be successful. I want you to get what you want. I want you to get these products. I want you to get these services. And then you can start to predict things. A few years ago um, on this channel, I, when I used to do social commentary because I stopped, I'm going to do that on another channel, I had predicted that we have a new economy, a new middle, you know, uh, a new class of people, very educated and dead ass broke. I think the title of the video was why college educated people will be working low wage jobs from now and forever, something like that, because essentially the marketplace works like this. The marketplace doesn't care if you can't play your student loans. Marketplace don't care. You know, marketplace kind of like the hunter badger. Marketplace, marketplace don't give a shit. Marketplace don't give a damn. Does not care. So you're sitting there thinking, I got to pay my student loans. I got to pay my rent. I got to pay my car note. I got to pay off bill because I borrowed 500 for them because I couldn't pay my rent. You're in this cycle of what you need to do while ignoring the marketplace. I built something called HustlersKungFu.com. We create mindsets because, once again, a lot of people are not fully in line with it because it's an advanced play. I know, based upon what I have seen in the marketplace in the last 20 years, that jobs, as we know, Alex, they're about to disappear. A good paying job, one that's like 60 to 100 grand with great benefits, those are kind of rare. And a lot of people are fighting tooth and nail for those jobs. But if you care about the marketplace, you care about people, you could create a business right where you are, selling a service, selling products that could make you the same money 
and you'll feel good about yourself. You'll sleep well at night, Alex. You would, you would, because see, you care about the marketplace and you don't care about you. So that's how you start a profitable business. That's how you make money. That's how you really, really set yourself apart from everyone else out here who's trying to make a buck. That's the thing. This week, I've had some wonderful phone calls with customers, potential clients, and there's the same overlying theme. I want to do something, but I don't know what to do. Well, here's an answer for you. Study the marketplace. See what you can provide for the marketplace that is needed and requested, or if you're prescient, that you can see that it's coming. My first book, going back to the successful storage auction business, I wrote that book because I knew the subject matter backward and forth. But I, it was 10 years of my life, 20 some percent of my life doing that one thing. Alex, you're trying to study something for a week and get 10 years of pay. This game's not going to work like that. Like I said, don't hate the player. Don't hate the game. Learn the fucking rules so you can win. And one of the number one rules is the marketplace does. So that's how you start a profitable business. That's how you start a profitable hustle. If you like this video, and you should, go below and I've got some stuff that's pretty nifty, pretty spiffy, pretty special for you. There's some free stuff down there and there's some things that's going to cost you a pretty penny. But if you want to improve your life, notice I said improve your life, not just build a business because why would you build a business that resembles that job you hate? Some that you're selling some you don't give a damn about, working with people you don't care about, doing all this stuff. Why would you do that intentionally when you had to do it to survive? That doesn't make any sense to me. So once again, if you want to build a life that you care about, that you love, and have a business that dovetails into your life versus you ingratiating yourself to your business, then we can talk. You've made it this far. There should be a number on the screen or it may be at the end. I haven't decided yet because I'm doing this on the fly, but call that number and I'll set up an appointment to talk about your service to the marketplace. If you already have some type of service or product that you're selling to the marketplace, we can have a great conversation. If you are clueless, Alex, don't really know what you want to do. You're kind of looking for the best thing, the great thing, the next thing. I'm going to recommend that you join HustlersKungFu.com and start with 30 days to 2500. It's a mindset course with salesmanship and how to build a business. But there is no thing that, that won't tell you how to sell this widget. It won't tell you how to get this product. It's a general course, but it could change your life. I've had one person who started a business from that course. I had one person who went from 30000 a month had a business already to a hundred thousand a month from that course, but they did the work and I'll make you this guarantee. If you do the work, Alex, you'll be successful. So once again, be sure to subscribe to the channel and be sure to go below the video and check out some of those wonderful things that I have for you. All right. This is Glendon, founder of HustlersKungFu.com. I'll see you in the next episode.